What's going on guys? So in this video we're going to be discussing that typical time of the week with the weekly rotation. And I uh, got a few newcomers to the collection this week. A little bit more than usual actually. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the fragrances of this video are new to the collection. And um, got some interesting variety this week. Still predominantly fresh for the most part, though there is some darker stuff here. But I had some milder weather with a lot of rainy or cooler days so i was able to really mix it up this past week so there's more variety than usual here so it's week number 138 stay tuned Starting off on Sunday is a personal favorite of mine that I haven't wore in quite some time. I've worn it since the year began, but this is only like the second time I've worn it this year. We're talking about Dior Sauvage, the Parfum Flanker. This is my big 200 milliliter bottle. Still my favorite version of Sauvage. Even over the Elixir, because this still maintains more of the Sauvage DNA. Just the most refined, smokiest take, I guess you could say, because of the Olibanum, the incense that's in here. I just really, really love the way this one smells. So much so that I have 200 milliliters of it. And uh, this is one that notoriously gets flack for being a weaker performer than the rest, when really it's an anosmia issue. I can tell you firsthand. Uh, this one actually lasts, seems like forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. If you spray this on clothes and then wash the clothes, it's still there after you wash the clothes, just to give you an idea. Though I don't need to spray my clothes with this. It's ridiculously strong on my skin. This is a really nice sillage. It's not a room filling projection. It doesn't project as heavy as the EDT and the EDP. But the sillage here is definitely stronger. Once you're a few hours in and that projection's calmed down and it's sitting close to the skin, this one has a really nice bubble and trail going. The magic's in the sillage for this one for sure. That's usually the case with these parfum flankers where the sillage is going to be where it shines and the longevity. And that's definitely the case here with Dior Sauvage Parfum. These days, it's uh, much more expensive than I paid for it. Um, <laughs> you'll pay more for a 100 ml than I paid for this 200 ml from Fragrance. Now, I caught a, an amazing deal that in hindsight, I'm so glad I did at the time. A couple of years ago when this was a newer release, um, it was 139 or 136, 130 something. After the 37% the 30, off code to get this 200 ml now, I don't even think you can get 100 ml for that. If you, you might be able to in some places, but I think these are going for like 160 to 190, something to like close to $200. It's ridiculous. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not worth it because I do love it. But if you can find a deal, find a deal. But definitely try it first. And don't just try it on your own. Go around people. That's the best way to experience it because you may go nose blind to it pretty quick and think, oh, this is weak. It's not worth the money and pass, even though you like the fragrance. So, because I know performance and what others think about their fragrance is important to a lot of people. So, uh, definitely, if you're going to spend time with this one and test it, go out and be around people so you can get maybe the feedback that you're looking for so you can know if it's performing the way you would want it to perform. But I definitely have no issues, and I love the way this stuff smells. It is Dior Sauvage Parfum. Then I got the shower. This is another one that gets a bunch of flack for being... A weak and basic scent and yes it is it is weak and it is basic so it, it's justifiable it's big pony collection number one from ralph lauren i used to have a little bitty travel size like the smallest bottle they they make years ago of this one and this was my favorite i've never tried the green one i've tried this one and the red one i've never tried the green or the orange one and uh this is a beautiful lime woody fragrance super fresh shower gel almost type of feel at the top yes it's a more generic scent but it's a very pleasant super refreshing enjoyable scent one of those fragrances when you just need a weak mega fresh fragrance kind of in the realm of like a ck1 summer flanker for example two three maybe four hours if you're lucky it was like three hours on my skin 
something like that before it fades away, and I'm good with that. I didn't buy it going into it hoping for a high-level performance. It's always been a weaker scent, and it's one that you know nobody shows any love to because it's a few notes. It's a simplistic note breakdown. The Big Pony Collection was created to be exactly what it is, to give your average guy a little bit of variety. This fragrance is for this, this fragrance is for that within the Ralph Lauren fragrance line. And uh, it's decent. It's nothing special. Pay 30 bucks for it and for 100 ml. And uh, that's kind of, you shouldn't pay more than that really and truly because, yes, it's a weaker performer, but if you have uses like I do for these mega fresh fragrances that are on the weaker side, it's definitely a good one. When it comes to what it actually is, it's a good fragrance for that. So, out the shower, Big Pony Collection number one from Ralph Lauren. Moving into Monday, new one to the collection. The more I spray it, the more I like it. My first impressions was a little strange because it's very bitter on my skin. And it's still a little bitter on my skin, but it just keeps getting better and better. The dry down is gorgeous on this. We're talking about Invictus Platinum, the newest flanker from Paco Rabanne. I really dig this stuff. This is really good. It's getting better and better and better. I did a full review on it within the last week, and uh, this is definitely a try before you buy. Not the most blind buy safe because the opening isn't the most magnetic of the Invictuses. Um, it's more about letting it settle down. On the test strip, you may not get as much of that bitterness as you do on skin. On skin, I get more of it than I do on the test strip, but it actually turned out to be quite the lovely fragrance that still has a little bit of the Invictus DNA. It walks the path, but not too closely. To where it does change it's more green and herbaceous like i said it's got that bitter quality up top but still has a little sweet aquatic tone in the backdrop to tie it to the line with the originals dna so it's a very very solid fragrance definitely check out my full review if you're looking for the type of performance i get and maybe a little bit more info beyond what you're getting right here but it is a solid one um it's definitely one that i advise you to try first i don't think this one's blind by safe at all it's paco Rabanne's invictus platinum then when I got at the shower, it was a new release from one of my buddies, two of my buddies technically that collaborated together, Michael Dinsmore from Making Sense and Joe from An Unaverage. Joe, we are talking about Making Sense, Unaverage patch. This stuff straight up smells like, picture a handful of Mike and Ikes, handful of Sour Patch Kids, Sour Gummy Worms, those types of candies, because it does have a lot of sweet, it smells like a candy that's comprised of just straight up processed sugar with some sour aspects to it in the top. I've been spraying two sprays on top of my hand most of the week, as you'll see. We'll get into it day by day. At least I think it's three nights this particular week in the rotation. I just gave myself two sprays on my hand. I haven't sprayed it around the neck or anything yet. I've just been enjoying it for me. I haven't gone out and about with it. It's just been kind of winding down in the evenings. This will curve a sweet tooth. People that like candy and have a sweet tooth and things along that line will appreciate and enjoy this fragrance. It's got a variety of citrus and fruits. It's blueberry, it's raspberry, it's lemon, lime, it's all of these things. And you smell all of that, as well as the sour. And then lying beneath it is this beautiful creamy vanilla ambergris dry down that's not heavy on the ambergris. It's more so on the vanilla. And right when you start to get into it, it's a little bit of a cooling like vanilla ice cream type of tone, but not heavy. Not like a Flower City Fragrance Bourbon Vanilla where that Tonka bean comes across as just straight up vanilla ice cream. It's not to that extent, but there's a little tone of it, but it's more of this smooth, creamy vanilla backdrop where the sweet doesn't go away, the sour does fade, and it just becomes this smooth, sweet, creamy candy. It's just, it's to die for. I love this stuff. It's so freaking good. They both, Joe and Mike, knocked this out of the park. Mike worked magic. This is officially my, I think, my favorite. Um, yeah, even more so than Triton and Fallen Leaf, which would were my, you know, my number one, number two for making sense. I think this is my favorite because I've been, I've been just spraying it sporadically. It's beautiful. Out the shower. Oh, and perfectly unisex too. Out the shower. On average, patch from making sense. Moving into Tuesday, um, I was debating between grabbing Elysium, and I was like, you know what? There's a few things I haven't wore that smell like Elysium in a long time and I, I was debating on doing an Alexandria Fragrances video so I ended up grabbing Zion because I looked at the bottle and I was like god I couldn't tell you that I barely wore this I mean look it's only got a little bit missing I've worn this just a few times and it's a really damn good clone of Elysium Parfum Pour Homme I just well for one reason or another 
haven't wore it. So I was like, yeah, let me let me spray that on. And you know, it's pretty much a dead ringer in the scent profile for Elysium Parfum Pour Homme. Now, are you gonna get the same experience and quality? No, you're not. This can't hold a candle to the blend and the quality with the original. I'm sorry, it's just a spade a spade. Um, but in the air, nobody's really gonna be able to tell. Just you. If you have both, you can or are able to test both side by side, you can tell the quality difference. But out in the air, people passing by, they're just gonna think you smell incredible, as with anything that smells exactly like Elysium, including Elysium. So you still get you get the Elysium effect fully. Uh, performance is great on this one. It's an extra to parfum. I believe I took a shower at like the nine hour mark and it was still, I was still getting nice little wafts of it randomly off my skin. So performance is not an issue. This is the older style bottles, but it's just as good as ever during the day. Alexandria Fragrance is Zion, their version of Raja Parfum's Elysium Parfum Pour Ohm. When we got the shower, it was back to back nights. I went with Unaverage Patch. This is definitely worth trying. 17 ml like this, run you 20 bucks. I just love the way this stuff smells. So freaking good, so unique. And now I say it smells like these different candies, but for a fragrance, that, that makes it pretty unique. Because not everybody's gonna like this. It's, it's polarizing. Because like I said, if you don't like sweet, you're gonna hate this fragrance. <laughs> this is one of the sweetest fragrances I've ever put on my skin and ever smelled. But it smells like literally opening a fresh bag of Sour Patch Kids or busting open a box of Mike and Ikes. You know, minus the sour with the Mike and Ikes, but that variety of that synthetic sweet fruitiness that you get from Mike and Ikes, the red, yellow, orange, green Mike and Ikes, all of that good stuff. You definitely get that here. So two nights in a row out the shower, sitting around, sniffing and enjoying, making sense on average patch. Okay, so it was a very cool and rainy day it was like the high was like 69 70 degrees something like that so it was perfect time for me to get a, a nice little full wearing in on this fragrance that i think is one of the best bangs for your buck because you can get it for around 45 bucks it's from afnan it's called supremacy and oud their clone of oud for greatness from Anishio. and i gotta tell you the performance is ridiculous the scent quality is right there with it. It's not a complete one-to-one -one with Oud for Greatness, but it's pretty damn close. And it smells so good. That mass appealing Oud that the Oud for Greatness DNA is known to be. It's all here. You're going to get the spices. You're going to get those sweet notes pretty heavily. It's, on the, it's a sweeter type of Oud. The Oud does come across a little bit more synthetic almost designer level it's not the most natural of oud smells just like with oud for greatness but it's it's so freaking good i did a full review on this one please check out that video if you want to go in depth and get a bit more detail from me but just know that if you i understand oud for glory is great as i hear i do plan on getting it and i do want to do a side-by-side -side comparison to really settle which one's the better one to get because i got to tell you this one blew me away i do have a few other Oud for Greatness clones that are very good, just not as good as this. I just haven't tried Oud for Glory. That's the most famed one from Latafa. So I will get that in the near future. So be on the lookout for that. I'll spend a little time with it and then do a comparison and see because they're similar price bracket. That one's around 40 bucks. This one's 45. So they're, they're within a few dollars of one another. So it just comes down to which one's going to be the one to get. So be on the lookout. I do plan on getting that within the next couple of weeks, spend a little time with it, and we'll do a battle video and just see once and for all, which one should you get? Because I've been getting a lot of questions about it, and I haven't tried Oud for Glory. So I can't weigh in just yet, but I will be able to weigh in soon. But during the day, Supremacy and Oud from Afnan. Really loving the stuff they've been doing in the Supremacy line. When I got out the shower, it was time for a good shave. And um, I don't always use my shave sets. Sometimes I just use, uh, I have these Cremo shave sticks. I have a few of them. I've been, I'm, I'm about halfway through my uh, mint one right now. Very soothing. Uh, you actually literally just wet your, wet your head, neck, and face it everywhere you're going to shave. Rub the stick, come behind it with the brush, and you lather on skin. And then I just shave, and it's it's got menthol in it, and I hit the lumbar at the end. I haven't even been using an aftershave. So that's why you haven't seen too many shave products as of late. It's just here and there. Uh, it's only when I feel like lathering up a soap. And in this instance, I went with the Zaharoff and Gentleman's Nod Signature Citrine Aftershave Splash and Soap. 
And then of course I gave myself a few sprays of the fragrance after the fact. Beautiful warm and sweet orange clementine combo. The incense does pop quite a bit. Uh, the darker notes, the base notes come out a bit more. In the soap, beautiful. Beautiful scent profile. Love this stuff. Claude did such a good job on this, as per usual. Definitely get a sample and try it if you're interested. This is the Freshy from Zaharoff. This is Signature Citrine. Like I said, based around orange and clementine. It's got a sweet orange type of smell. Um, it does transition. There's a bit more to it than just orange, clementine, amber, and incense. But that's predominantly what you're going to get here. It's definitely more on the warm orange, sweet fruit type of side but when I say sweet fruit I don't mean heavily sweet trust me it's more juicy and sweet like you would expect from just cutting an orange open you know so definitely check this one out if you're interested the shave set is great to layer with it it's a great shaving experience there's always a link for both gentleman's nod and Zaharoff down below if you're interested in getting either one so and you can get save yourself 10% out the shower had a good shave Went with the citrine shave set a few sprays of the fragrance. Moving into Thursday, I haven't wore this one in a little bit. I've only worn it once, twice previously. So it was nice to pull the bottle out and spend a little bit more time with it. One of the most masculine roses I've ever put my nose on. This stuff is gorgeous. It's got this creamy blonde wood aspect to it with this radiant rose raspberry combination, little touch of spices. We're talking about Adonis Awakens from Argos. Christian nailed it with this fragrance. This is probably my second favorite behind Triumph of Bacchus, which Donye was. And you can smell Donye in here. The woods from Donye is in Adonis Awakens. But go figure. My favorites from two of my favorite houses are the rose fragrances in the house, the men's rose fragrances. This is just so well composed and slightly unique because it's warm and spicy, but it's not too warm and too spicy. It's a it's got a dryness to it that kind of provides this unique character because typically with a drier rose, it's gonna be dusty and powdery. That's not the case here. The case here is the dryness is from the dose of woods, I believe. The raspberry note that's here provides just enough to stop it from being too dry because it's a juicy fruit type of fragrance oil and it's not too sweet. It doesn't add anything feminine, like for being a rose dominant, there's a rose absolute used here that you get from start to finish for being so rose dominant. There's nothing about this that leans feminine to me. This is the most masculine rose fragrance I personally have ever smelled that's not just loaded down with a ton of spices or something along those lines. So beautifully composed. Christian did a wonderful job. This is one that's worth getting yourself a sample and trying. If you're going to get a sample of this one, get a sample of Triumph of Bacchus while you're at it, because I still think that's the king of the mountain. It's going to be hard to topple that one for me. Uh, but this one comes really freaking close. This is definitely number two. It has jumped Baccio Immortel and Danye for me into second place, a close second place with Triumph of Bacchus too. And who knows, the more I spend time with it, it could potentially end up being number one, but it's pretty damn good. It's Adonis Awakens from Argos. Then we got the shower. It was another night of enjoying on average patch from Making Sense. I just really dig this stuff. You don't need much. Two sprays is plenty. Cause it's so freaking powerful. It's so strong. And it's a personal thing. It's a fun scent. It's not something that you're going to wear to work. I mean, this. let me just give you my scenarios for it. It's not something I would want to wear to a work setting. It's definitely very casual. Evening appropriate more so than daytime. This is obviously more juvenile, younger demographic. But, I mean, I'm 37. I can enjoy it just fine. I love how it smells. This is going to the movies where popcorn and candy are involved, for example. Going bowling, going catch up with friends or meeting up with your girl to go have a drink. This is more casual settings in the evenings. It's just a fun scent. It goes with the theme. This is going hang out at Top Golf and having a few drinks while you hit balls. This is this is the kind of settings and scenarios that I think this is ideal for. So if you do any of those things, and you're looking for something a little different that's going to stand out, that's probably going to start a conversation with your friends. You might want to get your hands on this. It's an average patch from Making Sense and an Unaverage Joe. Moving into Friday, this is one that has its 
moments where I'm indifferent and not sure how I feel about it. And then it has its moments where I think it's elegant and beautiful. We're talking about from M. Mikalif. This is Eden Falls. Very new to the collection. This was my first full wearing of this fragrance. They did send this one out to me a while back as well as uh, Desir Toxic, which Desir Toxic's amazing. I don't know. There's just something a little odd and kind of bitter about it. I believe it might be like an almond note that's in here, and it's like extra bitter. I don't know. It's just a little strange on my skin. It's it's a little milky, creamy, but <clears throat> the dry down's beautiful. It's just the opening. I don't know. There's something a little different on my skin with the opening on this fragrance. That's why I say I'm kind of indifferent about it. I know a lot of people enjoy this one, and there's nothing I don't like about it. It's nothing bad. It's I don't know, it just smells a little strange in the opening on my skin. But as it starts to dry, it becomes just so beautiful and elegant. It's a weird one for me. That's why I say i got to spend some more time with this one because it's... I am kind of have mixed feelings about it where it's kind of like maybe this isn't for me. And then it's like, well, it smells amazing as it dries down. But it's kind of a, I don't know, hit and miss at the same time. So be on the lookout for a full review at some point down the line. I do have to wear it a few more times. I uh, haven't done a bunch of test sprays or anything. I've just done the one full wearing and only like one one or two test sprays prior. I think two test sprays prior. So I'm still kind of in the testing phase and I'm just completely uncertain on exactly how I feel about this one yet. I need to put it in some different scenarios and situations and see how that kind of changes with how it performs on me, how maybe the, it works with my chemistry because it's, I don't know, I haven't gotten any reactions from anyone yet. So yet to be determined, but right now I'm kind of a little underwhelmed with Eden Falls, to be honest with you, because of the opening on my skin, but on paper and in the air, I don't get that, so it's definitely something with my skin, so to be determined at a later date, for sure, M. Mika Leaf, Eden Falls, we'll see as time progresses, and then one I picked up from the rack stores recently, it's basically Fruity Aqua de Jo, it's Paris Hilton, Just Me. I actually wore it two nights in a row. I wore it on Saturday when I got out the shower as well. This smells really good. Picture Perry Ellis 360 Red, and instead of spicy, being a spicier version of Aqua de Joe, it's a fruitier version. Fruity fresh. Still aquatic, still green, and a little spicy. Really smells like Giorgio Armani's Aqua de Joe. Uh, I may have to do a comparison video between this and Perry Ellis 360 Red, because if you have that, I don't think you need this. If you have this, I don't think you need that. So we really need to break it down and see which one's better if you're just going to get one. They're both sub-$20 fragrances. They both, I mean, this one's a decent performer. Perry Ellis does perform a little bit better in longevity. Not much, but a little bit better. And they have a very strong similarity in scent profile. So maybe I'll do a versus video down the line. Definitely comment below if that's something you guys want to see. I've had a few people mention it already. It wasn't initially my idea. It was mentioned in the comments in the video, and I was like, hmm, maybe that would be a good idea, because it is pretty damn redundant. <laughs> but out the shower, it does smell really good. Paris Hilton, just me. Moving into Saturday, one of my favorite fragrances I've added to my collection this year. We're talking Rasasi Hawass. Definitely love this stuff. Spicy Invictus, can't go wrong. Such a beautiful scent, it really is. On the synthetic side, yeah, for sure. But damn, it smelled, even directly off skin, it smells so good. If you're a fan of Invictus, you'll like this. You know, picture the original Invictus with some spices. I've mentioned it many times. There's cardamom and cinnamon here. It's a little bit of a smokiness on my skin, like an incense type of feel, even though there's no notes that would offer that. Um, I don't know, it's just the way it reacts with my skin. I love it. It's a beast on my skin, too. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. The price is up. As of yesterday, the price is up pretty high on Amazon like right around $70. I wouldn't want to pay 70, but I paid 45 for this. Just keep an eye on it. It fluctuates. It drops in the 40s, it drops in the 50s. 40 to $50 range? Yeah, absolutely. That's the sweet spot to pull the trigger. 60, $70 range? Just wait, you can find it cheaper. So, it, it's all price is always fluctuating with these sellers on Amazon and eBay and even the discount sites. You just never know. Just keep an eye out. They're always making it. It's mass produced. Uh, Justin just got a bottle that was manufactured in June, like a week and a half, two weeks ago. He just got it. So just be on the lookout if you're interested because it's definitely worth owning. 
I was super late to the party with this one, but it's definitely worth owning. I love this fragrance. This is, like I said, one of my favorite pickups of the year, and it immediately became one of my absolute favorite fragrances in my collection. Again, that's Versace Hawass. And then, like I said before, out the shower, we went two nights in a row with Paris Hilton Just Me for Men. I mean, this is just it smells really good. This is a great lounging around cheap alternative to Aqua de Jo that's more on the fresh, fruity, and aquatic side. Uh, Lotus is the only note in there that really offers any watery feel. It's a water flower type of thing. And there's a lot of it, apparently, because it definitely has a nice aquatic, like mouth-watering wateriness that aids in the freshness of the citruses and the fruits. It's just it's a lovely scent. It really is. It smells really good. Out the shower two nights in a row, just me from Paris Hilton. Well, that was the rotation. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. What did you guys wear this past week? Those of you that watch this on a regular basis, you know that's what I'm looking for. It's my favorite comments of the week to, to read. I like to see what you guys have been wearing. Uh, did we match anywhere at any point? Because there's quite the mixture and variety this week. Uh, some newer releases, some stuff I've wanted to get for a while, some newer niche stuff, newer designer stuff. Got a little bit of everything here for sure. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the stuff I wore this past week and you give it a spray now, probably thank me later. Have a good one, guys.